Hello, Dr. Coker here, and this is a story recap of Malabal Tor from the Elder Scrolls Online. This is the fifth part of the Aldmeri Dominion story series. Previously in Greenshade, after securing the Staff of Magnus for Queen Irene, she asks you to head to Valen Harbor to prepare for a wedding. This is what brings you to Malabal Tor. As you approach the harbor, Lieutenant Aaron of the Fists of Thalmor says he hopes you can help defend it, so you ask what's going on. A Red Guard force made landfall and assaulted Velen Harbor. They must have made a deal with the Droblog clan of Wood Orcs, as they attacked from the hills at the same time. Captain Calaralda was at the docks. She's either dead or cut off. That leaves me in charge. He asks you to rescue civilians, arm them, then meet him at the Fighters Guild barracks. The Fists of Thalmor? I thought they abandoned Velen Harbor. If they're still here, maybe there's a chance. All right, I'll help. Well, they've got me. Give me a weapon and I'll learn how to fight. Thanks for finding me. I, I don't think I could have done anything on my own. At the barracks, the sergeant thanks you and says Lieutenant Aaron has already charged into the fighting because he wishes to save a certain captain, but the sergeant does not think highly of this captain. You find the lieutenant, and he's eager to rescue the captain. He also wants to send a messenger to Deep Woods for help, and he asks you to clear a gate held by the enemy, then blow a horn when it's ready. Uh, you leave. I'm off to Deep Woods. Wish me luck. You rendezvous with Lieutenant Iran, but find him gravely wounded. He never found the captain, and he says he hopes the sergeant can save Valen Harbor as he dies. You speak to the sergeant who's next to him, and she asks you to kill the Drublog who killed Aaron. Chief Mockhook, the leader of the Drablog. I didn't realize what he'd done until I got in here, when it was too late. I bet he's in the town hall, the big unburnt building behind this one. Once he's dead, you report back to the sergeant. Now she wants you to create a distraction while she gets the militia into position. She asks you to set the enemy's supplies on fire. I'll order the militia to strike when we see enough smoke. If we can catch them by surprise, we'll drive the invaders toward the lighthouse. If not, well, it was an honor. Once you catch up with the sergeant, you find that they've managed to trap the Regatta captain in the lighthouse. You enter and kill him. I guess this is a fight now. The sergeant is in bright spirits when you return. Her militia's victories combined with you taking out the Regatta captain has caused the enemy to flee and the day is won. Meanwhile, she managed to find the missing captain Aaron was searching for, and it turns out she was hiding from the fight and remains unharmed. You speak with her and question her actions. Dare you? I did what I had to do to save my command. The lieutenant's sacrifice was unfortunate. If he'd waited, I'm sure the raiders would have taken what they could and left Velen Harbor more or less intact. He died for nothing. Then return to the sergeant once again. The captain's men are as disgusted with her as I am. With the townsfolk willing to testify against her, the Fists of Thalmor will have no choice but to cashier her. She'll be locked up until we receive word from Elden Root. Moving on, she's going to restore the town's defenses, then escort the Green Lady. The Green Lady is standing next to her, and she thanks you for saving Valen Harbor. Her name is Gwering, and she's only recently become the Green Lady, as the former died recently. She says the Drublogs have normally been allies, and she doesn't know what changed. She asks you to meet her in Drabul to investigate. Later, outside Drabul, you find the Green Lady. She's considering disguising you as a Drublog, but first, Jess asks you to defeat one of their champions. It should impress them, and you can get a lock of hair from them. You meet the chieftain, and he's really not impressed, plus he's irritated with the Green Lady poking around where it's none of her business. You speak to the Green Lady, and since this isn't going anywhere, she decides to go with Plan B, using the lock of hair to disguise you so you can spy on them. I want you to find the shaman. 
I saw him heading to the beach a short while ago. The chieftain is waiting for something, and I need to find out what. Find a good hiding place, and listen in. While hidden, you hear the shaman complaining about the chieftain communicating with someone using candles. You find the communication site, still disguised, and light the candles. It summons a spirit called the Hound, and you ask it what the plan is. The Green Lady must be detained until my arrival. I've given the materials you need for her bindings. She is not to be harmed, else your tribe will pay in blood. Velen Harbor is but the first gift. The conquest of a hundred cities await, if my will is done. Then you are caught by an orc named Roku, but thankfully she's on the Green Lady's side and tells you the Green Lady has been captured. She advises you to find the Shaman, her father. The Shaman sympathizes with the Green Lady, but cannot interfere himself, so he gives you a totem that will destroy her bonds. Together with Roku, you break the Green Lady's bonds, but you are attacked while doing so. Shield you from attack. Go. Don't panic! We can do this! Just as you free her, the Hound and the Chieftain appear. I warned you, Roku. You chose to stand against your people. No, brother, stay your hand! My daughter! This is not loyalty! You're this hound's pet! The Green Lady appears and stuns the Chieftain. Then you escape and speak to her outside. She has to go after the Hound now because he has taken the Silvernar and she thinks she can convince the Hound to let him go. Then you speak to the Shaman. He thinks the Silvernar is being held in Jatsugur, so you head that way to look for him. On the way, the spirit of the Silvernar appears to you and confirms he's being held in Jatsugur, but he doesn't know why. I need you to rescue my advisors. They can tell you more about the attack and perhaps help you free me from my prison. I am being weakened by some powerful magic. They won't be much use to you as fighters, but they're very clever. You find the advisors and they tell you that the enemies fought with a huge ugly creature on their side. They also say you need to take a ritual book from the enemy, one they used against the Silvernar. Excellent. Now that we have the book, perhaps we have a chance. That's it. The ritual of unbinding. Be careful. The Drawblog used it when they attacked us. The Sylvanar weakened when the Shaman read from it. Next, she says you need a runestone, which is used as a ritual focus that could be used to free the Sylvanar. We've got to hide! That lodge there! Let's get inside! You get to a safe house nearby and ask about the ritual. The advisors say that one of them has to die to save the Silvernar. Both of them say it should be them who dies, but you have to make the decision. Oh! I didn't think it would be like this! The pain! Ah! Then you talk to the remaining advisor. She says when the other advisor was sacrificed, the rune stone became a key. You need to use the key at four towers which surround the main building where the Silvernar is being held to disrupt the binding ritual. She sends an animal spirit to assist you. After all four binding stones are stopped, the Silvernar spirit appears to you and asks you to come to the fortress on the hill. Inside, his spirit leads you to his body. It's good to finally see you with my own eyes. Thank you for rescuing me, but our trials are not over. The binding stones affected my connection to the Bosma. I must get back everything they took from me. He asks you to defend him while he regains his energy. Once he has recovered, he creates a portal out of Jatsugur and the two of you enter it. Outside, the Silvernar thanks you and says the Drawblog threat is over. Now he needs to head to the city of Silvernar and he invites you to join him. I'd like you to come to our wedding. You deserve an invitation. Look for me or Dalinir when you reach town to get it. Besides, I don't think we've heard the last of the Hound. You may encounter his minions along the way. 
or even in Sylvanar. Later, when you meet him in Sylvanar, he says something is wrong as the wards are treating him as hostile. He suspects that the Hound has turned the three spinners against him. He asks you to attack some houndsmen he spotted nearby and take magical shards from them. First, you find a scout who spotted the houndsmen and she tells you which way to go. You've got the silver shards? Good. Keep them close. I don't know what they're for, but they've got to be important. But before that, you've got to defeat the Guardian of Sylvanar. It patrols the bridge between here and the city. As instructed, you find the Guardian and slay it. Once it's down, the spirit of the Sylvanar appears and says the Guardian will return soon, so you need to get to the three spinners quickly. He tells you to start by interrogating the witches who bound them. I'm getting out of I here. you're watching. Have mercy, please. I'll help you. From the Houndsmen Bewitchers, you learn the location of all three spinners. As you approach the center tree, the Sylvanar spirit appears to you and says that the spinners are trapped by puzzles that need to be solved by activating statues in the correct order. If you fail any puzzle, that spinner will die. The spinner Carolyn focuses on the present, and you find the correct order from a book called The Time Is Now. As for Einril, who's focused on the future, the order is in a book called The Time Will Come. Finally, Dothril, who focuses on the past, is freed from the order found in The Time Is Past. Sylvanar and the Green Lady will join, as they always have. Our tales never changed, though some played roles most unexpected. You return to the Sylvanar spirit to ask what's next. We must confront the Hound, but I have grim news. The Hound has somehow enthralled the Green Lady's spirit. That's why the wards against my entry were so strong. She's in the audience hall, fighting to repair the damage you've done. You and the Sylvanar must face the Hound and the corrupted Green Lady together. The shadows lifted. For the first time in many moons, my spirit is my own. I can see my destiny again. Without your help, the Sylvanar might never have made it back. I hope I didn't injure you. She says the Hound was once her dearest friend, and she'd hoped he would change his course, but she was wrong. Moving on, to proceed with the wedding, they need the Handfast, and she says Scout Angleth knows where it is. Just then, the Scout appears with it and sets it on the ceremonial pedestal. By the blood we consume, by the hills and bales we protect, let the spirit of the Sylvanar and the body of the Green Lady become as one. Before Ifray and those gathered, for this generation, and those who came before and go after, be joined. I've said enough. Go and be merry. Spinner Dothriel says, This wedding wouldn't have been possible without you, and you're welcome to stay as long as you like. You head outside and find Lord Goreshri, and he says he's been betrayed. He was on his way to the wedding with Main Akuzri, when out of nowhere, the Main went mad and attacked him with dark magic. Goreshri has determined that the Main is headed to Fort Grimwatch, so you leave for Reaper's March. That's the end of the main story in Malabal Tor, and I typically don't include side quests. However, in some cases, a side quest rewards a skill point, and in that case I assume the developers intended it to be significant. There is one such quest in Malabal Tor, so I'll include it now. Earlier outside Vlquaston, a busy shopkeeper mentioned that you should check out a newly opened eyelid ruin called Bellarata near Jathsogur for exciting wares. Uh, yes! At least this is what Juragdar tells everyone. He sells artifacts from secret places, very secret. You should hurry. They sell like sweetmeats when the moons are full. Do not be late. You find Jurakdar in his tent selling artifacts outside the ruins. You ask him how to get into the ruins, but he says he can't help you because he's dealing with unhappy customers. You talk to the customers. The first one says he sold her a Welkin stone, but it dissolved in the rain, so it was obviously fake. But then you learn that he never actually said it was a Welkin stone, so she should have looked into it first, and you convince her to leave him alone. The second customer says he bought an old staff from Jurakdar, but it fell apart. Again, you convince the customer to leave him alone, as Jurak is no expert and he should have been more careful with his money. 
The third customer says he bought a magic stone and slipped it into his brother's pocket as a prank. But then his brother was struck by lightning. You ask to see the stone, but as he picks it up, he is struck by lightning. Wait, what's that tingling? He then sits there quietly, so you speak with the merchant again. They're gone. Right. What powers you must wield. Then he says there is a ghost in the ruins that thinks he is her lover, and she keeps giving him gifts. You convince him to take you inside. Well, let's begin. Our fates through the years are tied. A lover's kiss, not one denied. As he finishes the chant, which sounds like a love poem, the door opens and the two of you enter. Inside, he tells you that the ghost, named Alanwe, tried to keep him here permanently last time. He gives you an ancient sword and says that there are even better treasures behind an eyelid barrier. He believes it will open if you can decipher some writings in the ruins. Jurokdar says he'll distract Alanwe while you decipher the writing. You find three scraps of a poem and read them in the correct order, then the barrier vanishes. As you proceed, a different ghost named Varandil appears. He tells their tale. He and Elanwe were lovers for nine years, but he died fighting in a war. Elanwe summoned his spirit but did not recognize him, so she erected the barrier. He's just trapped here without his love or his sword. You give him the ancient sword Jarakdar gave you, and he tells you he's forever in your debt. He approaches Elanwe, and because of the sword, she recognizes him. Elanwe, at long last I return. Varondil, you have been gone only a day, but it feels like an age. Each day is an age without you. Yes, true, but you, where have you been? It is a long story, but come, Aetherius awaits. Yes, together forever, as was always meant to be. So long, my friend, and thank you for everything. You return to Jurok Dar and tell him you've put the spirits to rest. He thanks you for your troubles and gives you some gold and another ancient blade. And that's it for Malabal Tor. Stick around on this channel. I'll be making the next video recap soon, the story of Reaper's March. Until next time. <laughs>